A relative new animal to our area is the nine-banded armadillo. Armadillos are small to medium-sized mammals. They are characterized by a leathery armor shell and long, sharp claws for digging. They have short legs, but can move quite quickly. The average length of an armadillo is about 30 inches, including tail. They are prolific diggers. They use their sharp claws to dig for food, such as grubs, and to dig dens. The nine-banded armadillo prefers to build burrows in moist soil near the creeks, streams, around which it lives and feeds. The diets of different armadillo species vary, but consist mainly of insects, grubs, and other invertebrates. Armadillos have very poor eyesight, and use their keen sense of smell to hunt for food. They dig their burrows with their claws, making only a single corridor the width of the animal's body. We have named this fellow Aloysius the armadillo. As you can see he is a hearty digger. About a month ago he started digging a burrow right next to a road on the farm. Strangely he shows up every night and day, digs a little and then goes away. We have no idea why he does this or where he goes. However, the burrow is consistently getting deeper. Armadillos are often used in the study of leprosy, they are particularly susceptible due to their unusually low body temperature, which is hospitable to the leprosy bacterium. Humans can acquire a leprosy infection from armadillos by handling them or consuming armadillo meat. Armadillos are a presumed vector and natural reservoir for the disease in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. The armadillo is also a natural reservoir for Chagas disease. So, the lesson here is look, but don't touch. This is one of our resident muskrats. His name is Marvin. Adult muskrats weigh 1.3 to 4.4 pounds, with a body length of 8 to 10 inches. They are covered with short, thick fur of medium to dark brown color. Their long tails, covered with scales rather than hair, are their main means of propulsion. Muskrats spend most of their time in the water, and can swim underwater for 12 to 17 minutes. They live in families, consisting of a male and female pair and their young. To protect themselves from the cold and from predators, they build nests that are often burrowed into the bank with an underwater entrance. Muskrats feed mostly on cattail and other aquatic vegetation, but also eat small animals. The great egret is a large heron with all white plumage. Standing up to 3.3 feet tall, it is often called the white heron, a cousin of our friend Bernie, the blue heron. The great egret feeds in shallow water or drier habitats, feeding mainly on fish, frogs, small mammals, and occasionally small reptiles and insects, spearing them with its long sharp bill most of the time, by standing still and allowing the prey to come within the striking distance of its bill, which it uses as a spear. It often waits motionless for prey, or slowly stalks its victim. Here is our old friend Bernie at the same beaver dam. There are lots of frogs and small fish in the water so he and the egret like to dine there. You all remember Otto the Otter from last winter, right? Well here is a surprise. Otto has relatives, lots of relatives. Here are five. An otter's den is called a holt or couch. Male otters are called dogs or boars, females are called bitches or sows, and their offspring are called pups. Even more surprising, here are seven otters. The gestation period in otters is about 60 to 86 days. 
The pup lives with its family for approximately one year. Otters live up to 16 years. They are by nature playful and frolic in the water with their pups. Its usual source of food is fish, but it may sample frogs and birds. The otters, muskrats, beavers, and a plethora of other aquatic wildlife all live in the environment created by the beavers. Speaking of beavers, let's see what they have been up to. They have been very busy this spring with four dams along one stream on the farm. This is Mama Beaver's husband. His name is Papa Beaver. He is Bucky Beaver's dad, and a fine specimen of beaverhood. We will show you how we know he is Papa Beaver rather than Mama. Watch closely as the beaver family cross the dam. Look at Mama Beaver's tail and you will see someone has taken a big chunk out of it. And Bucky stays close to Mom as always. See how closely Bucky stays to his mom. By the way, baby beavers are called kits. Now we are not going to point any fingers, but do you think Sammy the Snapping Turtle had anything to do with it? We used to think that Mama Beaver was a wonder beaver, building all these dams by herself as Bucky watches on. Until we saw this video of Papa Beaver working with her. Who knew beavers worked together? Beaver teamwork. What amazing animals.